museums began as palaces, displaying rare works of art. But in 1909, the Newark Museum opened with a different mission, to be for the community. The visionary behind this new idea was John Cotton Dana. Once he put forward this idea that museums are for everyone, they should reflect their community, they should serve their community, they should educate, they should enlighten, they should delight, you could never go backwards again. Now, the Newark Museum gives a John Cotton Dana Medal for Visionary Leadership. This year, to Lonnie Bunch, the founding director of the Smithsonian's National Museum of African American History and Culture. I am unbelievably humbled because of the importance of John Cotton Dana in my own work. For years, I have heard his guidance in my mind. For me, the quote that he always said was, the key is to find what the community needs and fit the museum to those needs. The Newark Museum is where young Lonnie came on school field trips. His family lived in nearby Belleville. It was there he first realized the power of history. Growing up in Belleville, we were the only black family in the neighborhood. So there was an awful a lot of things that were really horrible, that there would be racial things said. And, um, and I couldn't figure out why some people treated me really well and others treated me as if, you know, I was the, I had poison. And I realized that maybe if I understood history, if I understood the history of my community, of the history of this little town I grew up in, that maybe that would help me figure out how to live my life. And then by doing that, that just got me excited about thinking about how does history shape the way people live and how can I help people find a useful and usable history as they live their own lives today. In the 1970s, Lonnie Bunch was part of a new generation of young historians who were among the very first African Americans to earn doctorates from major institutions. Lonnie from American University and his longtime friend and colleague, Clement Price from Rutgers. Clement Price is the best historian I know and was the best friend I ever had. Clement Price didn't live to see the doors of the National Museum of African American History and Culture open, but he was in on the ground floor. I was talking about the shawl mm -hmm. that the museum has acquired as likely being, when the museum opens, one of the most powerful artifacts that museum will, will have uh, on display, probably because most students of American history have seen that photograph of the very elderly Harriet Tubman, wrapped in that white shawl. I will never forget the day that Lonnie called Clement to say, we got it, we got it. It was Harriet Tubman's shawl, the actual shawl that Queen Victoria had given to Harriet Tubman. This object, this physical object that embodied so much history and so much passion and so much meaning. Um, really, it was a transformative moment and they shared so many of those moments. Objects tell powerful stories at the new museum on the mall, from Emmett Till's casket to an actual slave cabin found in South Carolina. During the period of slavery, the cabin only had one door. This would be the door that the enslaved would go in and out because there was a way for the master to control, to oversee them. Then after freedom, the first thing that happened is they cut out the second door. And that second door was really a concrete manifestation of freedom. To say that we're no longer owned because we can control our own destiny. So just creating a door is really a symbol of resistance. The thing about this museum is that it's more about it's more than just telling stories about the famous. It's not just about the icons. There's plenty of space for Harriet Tubman and Dr. King and Muhammad Ali, but what makes the museum so powerful and so visceral is that it's the story of all of us. The folks whose names you never heard of, but whose contributions day after day, decade after decade, combined to push us forward and the entire nation forward. 
The capacity crowds show no sign of diminishing, and people are visiting from all over the world. In a way, it's full circle for Lonnie, the truth of what he set out to find as a young boy in Belleville. I thought about how can this be a place that gives children a kind of reservoir that they can dip into of self-confidence, of courage, of understanding there's a challenge to, to live your life, but also that you could help transform a country by the choices you make, by the work you do, by the struggles that you engage in.